Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today, we're going to learn how to create a YouTube subscribe button in Adobe After Effects. But before we dive into today's tutorial, I'd like to take a moment to give a special shout out to our sponsors. Without their support, creating content like this wouldn't be possible. Today's video is proudly sponsored by TubeBuddy, your ultimate YouTube companion. Whether you're a seasoned creator or just starting out, TubeBuddy is here to help you optimize your channel, boost your views, and grow your audience. With powerful tools like keyword research, tag suggestions, and analytics insights, TubeBuddy takes the guesswork out of YouTube's success. Enhance your workflow, streamline your process, and unlock your channel's full potential with TubeBuddy. Learn more and take your YouTube journey to the next level using the first link in the description. Let's dive into the video. Open After Effects. Create a new composition and call it Subscribe Button and set your own preferences. Grab the Shape tool and draw a rectangle. This will be our main bar. Perform some alignment techniques. Open the content parameters and change the roundness of the rectangle to let's say 35. Change the color of the rectangle to let's say white. You are free to change it to your favorite color. Now import some files that you will use in the animation, including the logo and icons. Again, using the rectangle tool, draw a rectangle. Change the color to red. This will be our subscribe button. Now let us align the button and the main bar. Using the text tool, let's type the word subscribe. Perform some alignment and change the text color to white. You can change your font to any of your favorites. In my case, I will use the Montserrat semi-bold font. We can also change the font size to around 38. Make sure that the buttons and the text are aligned. Let's create a new composition. Let's call it logo, set the width to 400 px and the height to 400 px as well. Now this will be our logo placeholder. Drag and drop your logo to the logo composition and adjust the scale and the position. Draw a circle, which will act as a mask for your logo. Perform some alignment and scaling to the circle. Now draw it to be underneath the logo. You can tweak the scaling a little bit. Now change the mat to our shape layer. Many will ask why all this. This is very important if your logo is not circular. Now let's head back to our subscribe button composition and drag our logo comp to the main bar. Adjust the position and the scaling. Now let's bring in the like button. Adjust the position and the scaling. Let's now create room for the bell notification icons. Drag the subscribe button and the like button to the left. Let's now import our notification icons. Change the position and the scale of the notification button. Highlight all the layers and create a new composition. Let's call it main. Let's now start the animation part. Move to about 1.5 seconds and create a keyframe. Head back to the zero second mark and change the position to be below and out of the visible composition area. Check if the speed of the animation fits what you want to achieve. Adjust the position of the keyframe. Highlight the keyframes and press F9 or right click then go to keyframe assistance and then easy ease them. Open the graph editor and make the curve look like this. Now the pop-up animation looks okay. Now let's animate the clicking cursor. Drag the cursor to the composition and change the size. Using the position parameter, change the position of the cursor and create that pop-up effect. To make things even smoother, press F9 or right-click, then go to keyframe assistance and then easy ease them. To make that clicking effect, we shall use the scale parameter. Create a keyframe. Let's say in this case it's 4% scale. Move a few frames forward and place another keyframe with a 4% scale. Now in between these two keyframes, add another keyframe with a 2% scale. Now when we perform a preview of the animation so far, 
we shall see those smooth pop-ups as well as that click. That was the click on the like button. Now to the subscribe button, using the position parameter, create a keyframe, move a few seconds forward, change the position of the cursor, and create a keyframe. Now at this position, open the scale parameter and copy and paste the previous scale animation. Preview and check if the animation is okay. For the bell icon animation, repeat the process that we did with the subscribe button. Now finally, change the position of the cursor to go outside the composition. Now let's preview what we have created so far. This looks great. With the position of the playhead placed at the scale animation for the like button, open the main composition. Click on the like button and head over to the effects and presets and search for the fill effect. Apply it on the like button. Using the color picker tool, sample the color of the bell icon. Create a keyframe, move a few frames forward, and change the color to blue. Also, let's animate the scale so that we can achieve that clicking effect. Now, when we preview our animation, we can see that the animation is having some life in it. Again, with the position of the playhead placed at the scale animation for the subscribe button, open the main composition. Here, select the subscribe text as well as the shape layer too. With both selected, use Ctrl D to duplicate the layers. Drag the duplicated layers just above the other layers. Use Alt opening bracket to trim in the layers to that position. Also, with the other two layers selected, use Alt closing bracket to trim out the layers to that position. Adjust the layers so that they don't overlap. For the shape layer 3, change the color to a dark color. And the subscribe text to subscribed. Now again, when we preview the animation, you can see the animation is taking shape. Now again, repeat the process cutting in and cutting out to the bell notification icons. To make things even more exciting, animate the rotation of the bell so that it feels as if there is a ring effect. Now, when we preview our animation, we can see that the animation is having some life in it. Now let's create an outro of the animation. Add a position keyframe, move a few frames forward, and keyframe where all the animation elements move outside the composition. Now this is our finished animation. You can add sound effects to make it even more exciting. To export this video as an MOV file with no background, just head over to the Composition tab, then Add to Render Queue. Change the format to QuickTime, and then change the channels to RGB plus Alpha. Choose your desired location and render. If you need a green screen, just create a solid and make sure the color is green. Head over to Composition, then Add to Render Queue. This time, the format should be H.264. Leave the other settings as they are, choose a desired name and location, and render. If you like this project, Check it out using a link in the description. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, adios.